Chemistry lecture number 82, Reaction Rate and Collision Theory. Reaction rate is the rate at which a product is produced in a chemical reaction. It can also be the rate at which a reactant disappears in a chemical reaction. A reaction rate is expressed in units of moles per liter second, or moles divided by liters divided by seconds. And we pretend that the reaction is occurring in a one liter container and we're measuring the moles of product being made each second. And thus, if a product is made at a rate of five moles per liter per second, it means that if the reaction were occurring in a one liter container, uh, five moles of product were being made each second. Collision theory states that chemical reactions occur when molecules and atoms collide. The reaction rate depends on the collision rate. If collisions occur more frequently, the reaction rate will increase. To show how molecules collide, let's look at a reaction between hydrogen and iodine gas. So we have hydrogen, hydrogen gas, uh, going to crash into iodine gas, and it's going to form hydrogen iodide. So a hydrogen molecule collides with an iodine molecule, and the next picture shows a diagram of the molecules when they collide. Okay. So in step one, um, the hydrogen molecule approaches the iodine molecule. So this hydrogen is going to crash into this iodine molecule. So um, in step two, the molecules collide. All right, so here they're crashing into each other. Uh, the bond between the hydrogen atoms begins to break. The bond between the iodine atoms also begins to break. At the same time, bonds begin to form between the hydrogen atoms and the iodine atoms. And this is called the activated complex. So when this crashes into this, the collision causes these bonds here to start to break. And to indicate that the bonds are starting to fall apart, we draw it as a dotted line. But then if this gets close to this one, a bond begins to form. So to show a partial bond starting to form, we draw a dotted line here, and we draw a dotted line here. So this is called the activated complex, and the activated complex is the state when old bonds start to break and new bonds start to form here and here. Now in step three, uh, the bond between the hydrogen atoms is completely broken. Uh, the bond between the iodine atoms is also completely broken. Uh, the bond between the hydrogen and iodine atoms are fully formed and the reaction is complete. So in the final step, these bonds here are completely broken and gone. See, they're not here anymore. And these bonds here are fully formed. So now we have hydrogen iodide. All right. Not all chemical, uh, not all collisions between uh, molecules results in a chemical reaction. In fact, molecules tend to repel each other since they're surrounded by a sea of moving electrons. Electrons have a negative charge, so if two molecules are surrounded by negative charges, the molecules will repel each other. Okay, so here's a picture of a hydrogen molecule, and it's being surrounded by a sea of moving electrons. Um, and here's iodine, also surrounded by a sea of uh, moving electrons. So these little negative charges indicate that the electrons are just moving all over the place. It actually only has two electrons that are moving all around here. Um, so if both of these molecules are surrounded by uh, electrons, uh, similar charges repel each other. It's like trying to put two north ends of a magnet together. They're going to push away from each other. So H2 and I2 repel each other since they are both surrounded by negatively charged electrons. You try to push them close to each other, they're going to want to push away. Pushing two objects together that are trying to repel each other is similar to placing a spring between two balls and pushing the balls together. It takes energy to push the balls and compress the spring. As the balls move closer together, more energy is stored in the spring. If you let go of the balls, the spring expands, releases energy, and the balls move apart. So here's a picture of all these words that you've seen here. So we can pretend that uh, these are two molecules trying to get close to each other, but they're surrounded by electrons, so there's a force of repulsion represented by the spring in between them. So if you try to move the uh, molecules close together, the spring, so to speak, gets compressed and it wants to try to push it back. And when you compress the spring, or when you move the molecules close to each other, um, energy is stored between the molecules in the same way that energy would be stored in a spring if you were to compress the spring in this fashion.
And if you were to stop pushing, if you were to let go, um, the spring would expand and the molecules would move away. So energy is released when the balls, or the molecules so to speak, move apart. So in the same way, it takes energy to push hydrogen and iodine together. And as they move closer together, potential energy is stored between them. Right? Just like the spring, right? You move them close together, potential energy is stored. So potential energy is stored between molecules if they move together. Now when the molecules finally collide, the potential energy stored between them reaches a peak. Old bonds begin to break and new bonds form. Energy is released when new bonds form. Energy is also released when new hydrogen iodide molecules move apart. So, here's our diagram of what's happening. Hydrogen and iodine start moving to each other. They're going to crash into each other. And then, when the molecules collide, the stored potential energy reaches a peak. So when they're close to each other, there's potential energy stored between them, as though a spring were being compressed in between them. And then you see that bonds are starting to form here and bonds are starting to break here. And then, when the molecules move apart, energy is released in the same way that when you let go of a spring, the spring expands, energy is released, and the objects move apart. And we can plot a graph showing how the potential energy between the molecules increases and decreases as they approach and move away from each other. Now this is not going to completely fit on the thing, so I'm going to have to move it around probably a little bit. Okay. All right. So on this axis here is potential energy. So as you go up, potential energy increases. And then here is time. All right. And this is the reaction that's occurring. Hydrogen and iodine are going to collide and create this product. All right. So here's what it looks like. Down here, this is when the molecules are separated from each other. And then all along here, the molecules are getting closer and closer. So potential energy increases as the molecules get closer and closer. When they finally crash into each other at this point right here, the potential energy is at the peak. It's so the spring, the repulsion spring between them is completely uh, compressed. All right, And then at this point right here, at the highest potential energy, um, it's formed the activated complex. And the activated complex is when old bonds break and new bonds start to form. The activated complex is also referred to as the transition state because you're transitioning between reactants and products. Okay, so after the molecules crash into each other and old bonds break and new bonds form, they move apart. When they move apart, potential energy goes down. All right, so the potential energy goes down and the molecules are further apart. Okay, so let me sort of repeat what was going on here. At the peak of the energy curve is the activated complex, and this is a transitional state between the reactant and product where old bonds are partially broken and new bonds are partially formed. Now this thing right here, E sub A, is the activation energy. And this is the energy required to push the reactants close enough together and with enough speed so that the activated complex can be formed. So this is the energy needed to get them close together. It's also the energy needed to get them to smack into each other hard enough to make the bonds break. And this delta H right here is the heat or enthalpy of the reaction. And this is the energy that's absorbed or released in a chemical reaction. So in this graph, uh, the energy absorbed is greater than the energy that is released. So it's an endothermic reaction and delta H has a positive value. Since, um, Hold on. <laughs> Use my notes. Since the reaction absorbs energy, uh, the vessel that contains the reaction will become cold. So in an endothermic reaction, um, the container where the reaction occurs gets cold. The chemicals are absorbing the heat from the surrounding. All right. Okay. Okay. Now, this reaction can go in reverse. And the reverse reaction is two HI, uh, well, two hydrogen iodide molecules will collide and form hydrogen gas and iodine gas. And then the hydrogen iodide molecules also collide and form an activated complex, then separate and form hydrogen and iodine. All right, so here's what happens. 
the hydrogen iodide molecules will collide into each other. When they collide, they form the activated complex. Bonds start to form here. Bonds start to break here. And then uh, when they separate, a bond is fully formed here and here to form hydrogen and iodine molecules, and the bond is completely broken here. All right, so this is the uh, overall reaction. And we can also plot a graph showing how potential energy increases and decreases as the hydrogen iodide molecules approach each other, form an activated complex, and separate as hydrogen and iodine. <clears throat> okay, so the same thing here. Uh, at this point right here, they're separate, and then along here, they're moving towards each other, so the potential energy increases. At the peak, um, old bonds break, new bonds form, the activated complex is made, and then when the molecules move away from each other, the potential energy goes down, and you have these separated products. So, notice that the graph is just the reverse of the previous graph that we had. All right, so the previous graph was, let's see if I fish it out here, was this one, all right? So we started low and sort of ended high, and that's this reaction. For the reverse reaction, you get the reverse graph, right? So this graph is just this one flipped around, all right? Now notice that E sub A, or the activation energy, it's smaller in the reverse reaction. In the other reaction, the activation energy went all the way from here up to here, all right? So it took a lot of energy to make the reaction go. But in the reverse reaction, it's only from here to here, see? From where you start to the peak right there, all right? So it takes less energy to push the molecules together and break the bonds in the reverse reaction, all right? Notice also that the potential energy starts high but ends low. So this means that the energy released in the reaction is greater than the energy that was absorbed. So this is an exothermic reaction. And uh, delta H is negative for an ex exothermic reaction. And since the reaction releases energy, the vessel that contains the reaction uh, will become warm. Okay. All right. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 82, Reaction Rate and Collision Theory.